Good evening and welcome to ATV News. I'm Charity Pepizani. Here are your top stories this Tuesday. Zimbabwe statistics show that an average of five people die daily due to road accidents. The Traffic Safety Council of Zimbabwe, TSCZ, unveiled a program to reduce road traffic accidents by 50% over the next eight years. In 2011, Zimbabwe saw its bloodiest year on the road since records began, with reported traffic accidents peaking at a high of 34,000. Some 17,000 people were injured in accidents and nearly 2,000 died. TSCZ Managing Director Obio Chinere say that in order to reduce the number of deaths on the road and achieve the 2020 target, drivers should observe road rules and be more cautious and responsible. We've been asking our viewers what they think about this story on our ATV Facebook page. And Joshua Jere says these are shocking statistics. Tinyashi Shoshwe thinks drivers get excited on the road and they need to be more cautious. While Wellington Tembo wants people to pray for those affected by accidents. In other Zimbabwe news, two street kids have died and, been ad and three admitted to hospital in Paruranyoto Hospital in a suspected case of poisoning. Police spokesperson Superintendent Andrew Peary said that on the 15th of November, the five street kids shared a brownish sugar-like substance which they believed would make them drunk. After they drank the substance, they, fe they felt stomach pains and started vomiting. At around 10.47 p.m., one of the five the, one of the five kids died and the second one died the following morning around 7 a.m. He said the other three kids were battling for their lives at Paraneto Hospital. In Zambia, a manufacturing company has been accused of producing fake maize seeds. Three men in Lusaka's Kamwala South have been arrested. Our friends at Movi TV in Lusaka provide the following report. This unfinished building appears as though it is mere construction work in progress. To the contrary, this building is a hub of fake maize production. Unearthed in Osaka's Kamwala South residential area, the plant is the source of counterfeited seed being sold on the Zambian market. These three men were caught preparing some fake MRI and seed maize seeds destined for Chipata Eastern Province. They get ordinary maize from Soweto market and color it with some concoction whose contents they do not know. The packaging bags appear to be genuine as they are properly labeled such that any ordinary person cannot easily tell the quality. For those who know genuine ones, the difference is that fake ones have some glittering color while as the original ones do not glitter. This illegality has been uncovered by a combined team of state police and officers from Psychop Zambia who passed on the manufacturing plant after a trail of the activities. The manufacturers of the fake seed, Francis Kalonga and Newton Mwelwa, say their main source of maize and the concoction in Soweto market. King Zinkonde, an intellectual property expert, is concerned that such acts have a huge bearing on the country's maize output. The magnitude that at which they are doing this thing is very, very, very worrying. And uh, I think uh, it calls for a lot of concern. Yeah, because government really, and they are stealing from these companies up to now, it's also a growing concern. I must also urge uh, the owners of the of the brands that they must take a, a step further to try and protect their packaging material because this is brand new packaging material that they have. They have even written, and for this they are even cheating people that this is GRZ seed. You can see it's written GRZ seed, like this is seed that is going to the government of the Republic of Zambia for that subsidized. But this is very, it's very unbecoming. It's very alarming. Business persons must be wary that every product can be counterfeited and that it is their duty to put up measures to protect their brands. Mwape Kumwenda, Movie TV News, Lusaka.
Malawian President Mrs. Joyce Banda, who was expected to officially commission the much-awaited Karonga Chitipa Road, has called the ceremony off indefinitely after two members of the governing People's Party died in a road accident in Chipita on Monday evening. The, the victims apparently fell from a truck while traveling to Chipita to attend the official road opening. State House Press Secretary Stephen Nlene confirmed that President Banda canceled the trip to honor those that have died and others that were injured on the road accident. He added that President Banda, who is also the leader of the People's Party, was deeply saddened upon receiving the news of the accident. A bust in honor of late Zimbabwean actor, theatre guru and playwright Walter Mapuruta is to be unveiled at Theatre in the Park in Harare. The bust will be officially unveiled on Tuesday 27th November in a ceremony that will be officiated by the Harare City Council Mayor and attended by gov governmental officials, artists and members of Mr Mapuruta's family. Walter Mapuruta passed away earlier this year after a long battle with Nan Hodgkin's lymphoma. We are now joined by Leslie Moyo from Rooftop Productions, the company behind Theatre in the Park. So Leslie, could you tell us why you have decided to honour Walter Mapuruta? The reason why as the Rooftop Promotions and Theatre in the Park we have decided to honour Walter Mapuruta is that uh, he is a uh, or a legend in terms of, of, of the theatre industry. And we also believe that uh, we have to honour our own people. We don't have to wait for an outsider to, to do it. And so we want to cultivate that culture in Zimbabwe, that we should honour uh, our very own people who have contributed uh, immensely to to the growth uh, of, of, of of the art industry in Zimbabwe. And so that is why we have um, uh, Taken the time to 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 consult wildly with uh, with different artists in, in terms of how we we could uh, honor him, and so we decided then to a bus made where it would be permanently placed in the park, and also that would be the start of of, of, of honoring other theatre players in, in in the country. There's lots of people going to this ceremony, Leslie. Walter was a very important man, wasn't he? It's very important because we're talking about someone who gave uh, uh, more than half of his life uh, to, to to the art industry in the country, both uh, television and uh, theater. And uh, he has featured in, in so many productions, uh, uh, locally, regionally, and internationally. And uh, not, not only that, but also in the, in the development aspect of, of theater itself, where he worked with uh, many groups, uh, especially in, in different communities of the world. And so, yeah, it's very fitting to 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 be honoured uh, for his telling and contribution to to the art industry. In the, the the mayor of Harare will, will officiate uh, at the at the unveiling of the bus, and so we have also invited um, other industry players. Uh, we have also invited our government officials and uh, members of the diplomatic group. And of course, Leslie, you have your play Busiku opening tonight. Are you excited about that? Yeah, we are, we are so much excited about uh, about the play Busiku, which is opening uh, tonight and in just a few hours from now. And yeah, we're so much looking uh, forward to, to people coming in and, and, and consuming this work. And also, maybe I should also mention that uh, during the, the official unveiling of, 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 of all temperatures past, there will also be uh, the premiere of a, of, a, of a play called uh, Protest, which is done by two of Zimbabwe's uh, 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 veteran uh, theatre actors in Aid uh, and O'Brien Jr. And so yeah, it, it is quite a, a, an exciting uh, time for us in, in terms of, of theatre. Thanks for joining us. All right, thank you. There are four English teams playing in the European Champions League today and tomorrow. Here to assess their chances is our football expert, Liam Thorpe. That's right, Charity. And I was on ATV News talking about the Premiership last week, yesterday, sorry, and suddenly we're in European games and it's a totally different ball game. 
The big game this evening sees the holders of the cup, Chelsea, take on the Italian giants, Juventus, in Italy, in Turin, to be precise. Now, it's a decisive game for Chelsea as they currently sit in second place in the group, which would see them qualify, but Juventus are just one point behind them. So a win for the Italians would see them leapfrog Chelsea into the second qualification spot. Chelsea themselves will be boosted by the return of Juan Mata, the little Spaniard, Oscar and Ramirez, the Brazilians, for this crucial, crucial game. They're in a bad spot of form and will need to get back to winning ways if they want to stand any chance of progression to the next round. Now, it couldn't be a more different occasion for Manchester United this evening. The Red Devils have secured four wins in four European games and they've already qualified for the next round of the Champions League. And it's because of this that manager Sir Alex Ferguson has left the likes of Wayne Rooney, Robin Van Persie and Rio Ferdinand back in Manchester as they travel to Turkish side Galatasaray. So this will be a good time to try out some young and perhaps a bit more inexperienced players in what is a really hostile atmosphere. So it'll be interesting to see how they cope. Moving to tomorrow night now and Arsenal take on the French champions Montpellier at the Emirates Stadium. The Gunners are in a slightly similar position to their London rivals Chelsea as they currently also sit in second place. They are just one point ahead of Olympiacos who lie in third. Arsenal will be boosted by their thrashing of big rivals Spurs at the weekend and they will hope for a comfortable win tonight or tomorrow night sorry, that will boost their qualification chances. The big one though is tomorrow and it's the clash of the titans between the English champions Manchester City and the Spanish title holders Real Madrid. The reverse fixture in September saw an absolute classic with Real coming back from behind to beat City 3-2 at the Santiago Bernabeu Stadium. City may be top of the Premier League but they sit bottom of their European group with just two points. Their chances of qualifying are very slim and anything but a win against the Spaniards will see them crash out. That, for me, Charity, is going to be the game of the week. Right, so I can see that they're very important games here. And which English sides do you think is going to win? Well, in terms of qualification for the next round, there's different, different stages for different teams. As I've just mentioned, they're Manchester City, they're basically out already. They've, they've just got two points. If they don't win tomorrow, they're completely out. But to be honest, in a group of Real Madrid and Borussia Dortmund, I can't see them progressing. Manchester United, on the other hand, well, they've already qualified, so they've got one eye on the next round. The really interesting ones are Chelsea and Arsenal. They're in limbo at the moment. They, they could go either way. They'll either progress to the next round or they won't, and they'll have to go into the secondary competition, which is the Europa League. So they're the ones that it's really interesting. I predict, personally, United are already through. I think Arsenal and Chelsea will both make it. But Manchester City have kind of been struggling with that. Why do you think this is the reason? Well, it's interesting because as I've just said, they're, they're top of the Premier League and they've started to play well in, Eng in English football, but they are very inexperienced in European football. They Remember, they've just got all this money and suddenly they're now in, they're playing against teams like Real Madrid, things that their fans could only have dreamed of, but it takes time. You know, Manchester United have been playing in Europe for the past 20 years or so. City need time for their players to come together as a squad and play what is a very different style of football in Europe. But don't get me wrong, in a few years' time, I, I can see them getting very far in the competition. Yeah, so if I'm saying anything, I support City. You know that I support City, so... I do. Yeah, so City all the way. <laughs> <But thank laughs> well, not this much. season, I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> but but it, for fans around the world of Man City, it's, the future is bright. So their rivals, Manchester United, have done much better than they did last season, didn't they? That's correct. Last season, United had a terrible campaign in Europe. They actually finished third in their group and had to go into the secondary competition called the Europa League. Again, they were knocked out of that by Atletico Bilbao, so it was a, a really bad time for United fans in Europe. But this season couldn't have been much better. They've won four out of four. They're top of the group. As I said, they can rest players. And I think, I think they've just got to put last season down to bad performances, maybe underestimating the group, because Manchester United this season have got one of the easiest groups, and they haven't underestimated them. Ferguson has played a strong side in each and every game, and they've won them all. So now he's in the privileged position of being able to rest players and look ahead to the next game in the Premiership. So I think basically this season is a case of them learning from last season's mistakes. And, you know, they, they could go far in the competition. Very good. Today's photo of the day is this great effort sent in by Nigel Peter Siziba. 
If you have any cool pictures, why not send them to our ATV Facebook page and you could appear on the big screen. Thank you for watching and have a lovely evening.